Hi. Recently in a Facebook post, I mentioned that there are a lot of tells that Amazon sellers give out that let the supplier know they can raise the price a bit, or actually raise the price a lot. And people ask me, what are those tells? What are they? And I've got a list of 30 of them for you. But first, what is a tell? It's a poker term. A tell is some sort of gesture or some sort of giveaway that lets your opponents know that you're bluffing or you have a strong hand or you're questioning something or whatever. It, it gives away. You're, you're no longer keeping a nice poker face. You're, you're giving away information. For the suppliers, they're looking for information. They're going to ask you all sorts of questions, have all sorts of small talk, looking to gather information about you about how much you can afford to pay, and more importantly, how much can they afford to charge you, and if you're a serious customer or not. Now let's talk about charging. First and foremost, there are different levels of selling products, and based on that level, if the price is too high, you're going to walk. The lowest price, the lowest threshold, comes from people who are selling to retailers, in-store retailers, not on Amazon, to in-store retailers because they have to make money and still sell to retailers who keystone or double their price to put it on the shelf. Next level up are distributors. That's because sometimes the first level sells to distributors or retailers, but distributors are selling to retailers, and because retailers, they're retailers, sometimes they get a little bit more leeway. Next up are the retailers themselves, because the suppliers know that the retailers have to double, as I said, keystone, the price. And then at the top, the highest threshold, the ones you can get away by charging the most to are Amazon sellers. So they're looking for every indication that you're an Amazon seller. Not only are you an Amazon seller, but that you're an inexperienced Amazon seller, or you may have some misconceptions. They will look for those tells, and that's going to dictate to them how much they're going to be charging you. Now, we know the basic questions. They're going to ask you what's the product and how many. But the other small talk is going to indicate so many things. So here is a list of 30 tells. First and foremost, mentioning Amazon. As we said, that's the highest tier. Also mentioning FBA. That, too, is the highest tier. Talk about your FinSKU. That puts you at the highest tier. Don't talk about the FinSKU until after you've negotiated a price. When they ask you, where are you going to sell? Tell them, USA or UK. Don't even say Amazon. Asking for DDP shipping. It's great for first time sellers, maybe second time sellers who haven't figured out shipping yet. But DDP is an indication that you're not there yet. You're still new, you're still inexperienced. Um, next is asking for samples of your product. That's a big one. Because samples should be samples of their work. You're looking to judge the quality of their work, not whether or what your product's going to look like. So when you're asking for samples, you should be looking for samples of the quality of their work. Another one is just because it's Amazon, um, and Amazon sellers have a reputation of being bad credit risks, and placing small orders, uh, asking for small orders. It fits right in there. Another big one. I'm the new procurement manager for XYZ Corporation, or I'm the sourcing manager for XYZ Corporation. My boss won't like that, that price. You have to bring it down lower. That's crap. Every single supplier knows that you're lying. They know that you saw some YouTube video, they saw the same one. Right from the beginning, you're letting them know that you are going to be deceptive with them, and that opens the door for them to be deceptive with you. Next, lack of product knowledge. Understand your product. Research it out. Research how it's made. Understand how the manufacturing is done. Asking for unreasonable differentiation. Oh, I really like this, but I need the outside case to be textured like a, um, a, a checkerboard kind of texture on it. And then they tell you what the price of a new mold is, and you're completely surprised because you had no idea 
that creating a new plastic housing requires creating a new plastic mold. No, understand what and how um, your differentiation is created, and therefore you're not going to come off as naive and unknowing. Another big one, just assuming 30, 70. I've seen things, I've seen things on Facebook that say 30% down, 70% upon completion. That's the standard. Uh, it's not. It's not the standard. It should not be the standard for you. It certainly was not the standard when I started years ago. So you put forward how much you want to pay. Don't let them say 30, 70. You say, well, I want to pay 25% up front, 75% upon completion after inspection, or 75% upon BOL. And then let them know, and by my third order, I want to do 15% up front and 85% 30 days after receipt. Start that discussion, 3070. It's not set in stone. And if you're just going to roll over and accept it, then they know you're going to roll over and accept a lot more. Talking to them, just like this. Talking on Skype, WhatsApp. That's great because they will talk to you on both of them. But they'll also know that you're not really tuned in to what's happening in China. China uses WeChat. It's the most ubiquitous platform in China. It's used for, for so many things, but actually primarily texting video chat. And they have a great video platform. If you're doing WeChat, they know that you understand business in China. It establishes you as a better client. Next is similar, keeping communications to Alibaba. Don't be afraid to go off of Alibaba and talk to them on WeChat. Yes, you want to document everything, and frankly, you can document um, on WeChat on your computer. But most importantly, you don't want to be the person who's in the swimming pool hanging onto the edge. Get into the middle. Swim around. That's what happens when you're saying, I won't talk off of Alibaba. Don't let fear drive you. And in fact, you're going to miss, miss out on other sourcing platforms as well. Next, lack of knowledge about Chinese business. Get yourself a copy of a book called Kiss, Bow, or Shake Hands. It's going to tell you briefly, and it's great, how to do business in all sorts of cultures. So understand the Chinese business culture. Another one is not using an NNN, which stands for non-disclose, non-use, and non-circumvent. Completely different discussion. But along those lines, not understanding what an NNN is. Or having an NNN in English, it should be in Chinese, using an NDA instead of an NNN. An NDA is not really applicable to Chinese business, and it's not going to protect you. Negotiating like you're buying a car, looking for conflict, trying to figure out what percentage you need off in order to be a winner. Along the same lines, not knowing what your target price is, because you're not looking to negotiate down a percentage. I've seen again and again people saying, what percentage should I try to negotiate them down by? And people saying, you should try to negotiate 15%, 10%, 20%, 50%. Crap! You need to negotiate to where your target price is. If you don't know your target price, if you don't know what it takes for you to make money, then how do you know you're still making a good deal? You might be making a deal where you're losing money. Or you might be making a deal where you're leaving a lot on the table. You need to know what your target price is and then negotiate. And by the way, when you do that, never start at your target price. Start below and work your way up. When you are negotiating, do not promise future orders. That is a mistake and it will come back and bite you. You can talk about your expectations for growth, but do not promise and obligate yourself to future orders. And when you negotiate, this is another one people are surprised at, do not negotiate for X works price. Always negotiate for FOB price. That's a big one. They will know if you're negotiating for FOB that you have a better understanding of shipping and business. If you're negotiating, negotiating for X works, you may have a great understanding of business, but they will assume that you don't. They'll assume that you're going to be shipping DDP. We already talked about that. Next, asking to split the cost of the mold. Oh, uh, that's expensive. Can you split that with me? Or can you have it refunded back to me after a, a certain threshold of purchase of sales have been made? Don't do that. It shows that you have 
very, very bad financial stability that you're, you're freaking out over every dime. Reality is molds are expensive, but they shouldn't break you if you're doing your business correctly. And more so, if you pay for the molds, you always, always own the mold. If you're having them pay for the mold or split the mold and later on you say, oh, but you're selling my stuff to somebody else, blame yourself because they paid for half of it or now they've reimbursed the whole cost. They own it. By the way, on my site, there is an NNN that also includes a mold ownership statement. Use that if you're getting a mold. Next, asking for a, well, asking for a golden sample. A golden sample. That is a term used by Amazon sellers. At the very beginning of the list, they know you're selling on Amazon. You can sell on Amazon and other platforms. You can certainly look at it yourself and figure out how you're going to do it, even if you don't make those, those sales. But you want to establish yourself as someone who has this threshold, not this threshold. When you use the words golden sample, you're telling them, charge me this amount. Lack of inspection. If you're not going to do an inspection, and they tell you, well, we don't do an inspection. It's, uh, inspections are bad. They're, they're, going to, they're going to take your money. They're going to take our money. No, do an inspection. If you fall for any of that, they know they can charge you higher. Asking the supplier to design your product. Oh, I want this to be different. Um, can you make it so that this is higher here, this is lower here, or the shape is a little bit different, or the texture is different, or so on? Um, I want it to be able to do three things instead of two. You're asking them to design it. Two things are a problem. One, you're letting them know that you don't have the resources or the skill or the knowledge yourself. Again, they're going to take that as a tell. They're going to charge you more. Second, they're going to have to make up the price of that designer on their staff. So, of course, they're going to charge you more. Now, this is not tweaking small design pieces for DFM efficiencies. This is designing the change. And lastly, on that, as long as their designer is doing the change, they have every right in China to call themselves the designer, file for patents and other protections and so on. Next, asking for a signature in China. A signature for a business is a stamp. It's not a handwritten signature. So if you're asking for a handwritten signature, you are putting on a big sign, brilliant lights saying, I don't know what I'm doing, charge me a lot. And last, number 30, agreeing to deceptive practices. If they say to you, oh, we could write this in here and you won't have to pay as much for duties or tariffs. Or we can do this and it's not going to be as safe, but we'll be quiet about it. If they're going to ask you to do a deceptive practice, say no and try to find another supplier. If they ask you to do a deceptive practice and you say yes, then they know exactly who they're dealing with. They're dealing with someone who's going to lie, who's going to deceive. You already know they're going to lie and deceive. And of course, they're going to lie and deceive to you because they can. Once again, that price goes up. So there you are, 30 uh, tells, as poker players call it, that lets Chinese suppliers know they can charge you higher. All right, good luck. Hope this helped.